got a science-based video today guys and girls there's this no girls watching me what the f today people we're talking about how many planets we actually have in the solar system you know off the top of your head go say it what is it you're wrong you're a idiot and you're stupid too much high energy Ah, oh, better drink more coffee. There's actually 50. No, I'm just fucking with you. There's about 22 plus, give or take. Let's let's dive into it. So, when you think of our solar system, you probably, you know, think of the classic depiction that school gave you, you know. There's 8. But the truth is there's way more. It's it's actually pretty crowded beyond Neptune, believe it or not. But anyways, there's a whole strange family of icy ocean-like planets, or well, hidden ocean planets with rings, all sorts of shit, all battling for the title planet. Today, we're gonna break down almost every single one. From Mercury's hot blazing, actually no, we're not going over Mercury, you should know about that already. Fuck you. But we'll go, you know, all the way to Sedna, which you don't even know what Sedna is, do you? Said my, said my nuts. Okay, so we have all of our planets here, right? We have Pluto, which most people debate back and forth. Well, what is Pluto? Once considered the ninth planet, to this day, it is now classified as a dwarf planet. It has like an extremely thin atmosphere, and it's extremely icy with icy mountains. There's, there's, I mean, it's, it's not a useless planet. The biggest assumption is that below the crust, there is water that's, you know, it's not all frozen. And in that water, there could be possibly life. Shit that looks like you. Oh, hell no, man. And then we have behind Pluto is Eris. 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 It's slightly smaller than Pluto, but more massive. How does that make sense? I don't know. It was discovered in 2005, and it's the whole reason why we contested Pluto as a planet in the first place. Because it's right behind it, and it's a dwarf planet. The next one up is hum Humia. Humia. It is a, to simplify it for you, so you're not sitting here watching this entire video, is it is a oval shaped, fast spinning, small planet. Then next up, we have this planet called Make Make. It's a, think of it as like a large, massive moon. Boobies. It's a, it's a reddish, icy dwarf planet in the Kuiper belt. Whatever the fuck that means. And it's just, uh, you know, it's got a moon wobbling around it called MK2. Next, we have Ceres, or I'm probably, I'm, I'm butchering all these names. So Ceres Caressus Siberis is a large object between, I believe it's Mars and Jupiter in like their, you know, their little, their little belts they got going on. And the coolest part about this planet is that it has a brine, like a salty brine uh, layer underneath the crust, hinting at a some sort of um, present past and a, a, a possible, how do I say this word, habitability. Next up, we have Orcus, sometimes called Pluto's anti-planet. Why? I don't fucking know, don't ask me. Really because it orbits its orbit is almost identical to Pluto's and it has a moon that's also fallen and around like it's a little bitch called Vanth. That's a cool fucking name. That's Vanth. I'm going to name my pet Vanth. Next up, we have Quaro. Quaro is a large object in the Kuiper belt as well with a moon named Wayot. Wayot. And recently, within like, I don't know, I think it was like a year or two ago, they're saying that it's possible that Quaro has rings around it as well. So that's pretty fucking cool. Boobies. Next up, we have Sedna. Yeah, we we're talking about this earlier. 
dumbass. Sedna's a weird one. She's fucking slow as hell. Not exactly like Mars, but pretty red. Um, I'm colorblind. So Sedna has one of the largest orbits known to man. She literally takes 11,000 years to orbit our sun. Think about that. 11,000 years goes by and she finally got near the sun. What the hell? It's extreme distance is the only thing that makes it a candidate for possibly being a planet. Also, we don't know much about it because, you know, it's got some distance between us and Earth. Next, we have Gong Gong. Gong Gong. Hey, man, Boba Fett, you been to Gong Gong? Gong Gong. Oh, yeah, man. That's where I made your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Uh, Gong Gong, a reddish dwarf planet with a tilted orbit, so it's a little retarded. And the name Gong Gong is from a Chinese water god with a moon that's spinning around it called Exigling Liu. I swear to God, I'm not drunk. I swear to drunk, I'm not God. Next up, we have Salisa, Salicia, Salakaya. A dark distant object in the Kuiper belt. Again, of course, they're all in the same area. And it has a, a smaller moon orbiting, orbiting around it called Ectea, which, you know, they're saying that moon helps them uh, use the math and whatnot to figure out the true size of Cilicia. It's one of the more brighter trans Neptune objects out there. If you don't know what that means, just, yeah, just shut up. Next up, we have Elixion. 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 Elixion is in the red Kuiper, Kuiper belt, and it is like tidal locked with, with Neptune, just like Pluto. Uh, there's not much about that because we're kind of getting out there pretty far. So there are like, oh yeah, this one's called Ding Fucking Dong. Next up, we have Varda, a mid-sized um, dwarf planet in the Kuiper belt again. And the name is uh, uh, a Tolkien character. So I guess you could say it's like, please don't Lord of the Ring fans, don't fuck me up. I'm gonna say that the name is sort of Elvish, right? And then there, I'm gonna move, you know, fuck up this name as well. There's also a moon orbiting it called Elemer or some shit like that. Last but not least, we have one called 2002 MS4. It is one of the largest dwarf planets that we have around the same size as Sedna as well. It is the farthest out and it is just the most unknown because, you know, as far as fuck. So whether you stick with the old classic, it's only eight boys, or you can count the, the hidden dwarf planets and hidden giants. One thing is clear out of all of this. Our solar system is way bigger than most people think. And if you've enjoyed this ride to these planets, please feel free to subscribe and flip my ding dong so you can join us on the rest of our adventures going into, I don't know, a baboon's ass. Till next time, and as always, good game and good night.